coming up to the top, we'll click on the little quadcopter icon, and that's going to bring us here. Remote identification, we're not going to worry about. Now, basic settings. So if you set your drone down and start it up, that sets your home point. If you then pick it up and move it to another location, and you want that to be your new home point, if you click on this button right here, it'll say, okay, it's going to reset it. We click OK to the quadcopter icon. Now, if we want it set at the remote, we would click on the little button with the person icon. The next really important one is multiple flight modes. Now, if you leave this off, the only thing you could do is P, which is your positioning mode, and this gives you all of your forward obstacle, side obstacle if you have it, satellite and vision positioning. Those are all active and enabled but it doesn't let you move into sport mode or attitude mode. If we turn this on, and I fly with mine on all the time because I want to move back and forth, my drone will fly in P mode about 30 miles an hour and in sport mode almost 60. And there's projects that I'm on where I need that higher speed. Okay, now down to return to home altitude. This one's important. The default I think is 30 meters, yeah, which is almost 100 feet. You need to look around where you're flying. And if there's really tall trees and you're gonna be flying near them and around them, you might wanna set that return to home altitude at a greater height. I typically leave mine at 120, and then depending on where I'm flying, I will change it to something more appropriate. The next one is setting the maximum flight altitude. Now we're going to leave that at 393.6 feet or approximately 400 feet, which is the maximum that we're allowed to fly above ground level. There is exceptions to that, but if you don't know what those are, then you probably shouldn't be flying above that. Now my drone has upward obstacle avoidance. I always leave that on and that's especially important if I'm flying indoors. Now let's move into advanced settings. The most important one in the gain and expo tuning I'm going to talk about is EXP or exponential. You can see that I have mine set to 0 0.3, 0 0.25, and 0.25. That's the throttle, the rudder, making the nose go right or left, and going forward, backwards, left or right. Now, the lower that number, the closer we get to 0 0.1, the bigger that curve is. And what exponential does is that it softens the center of the stick so that when you move the stick, you don't get a jerky immediate movement. You get a softer movement. And the closer you are to 0.1, you can see that that curve is much bigger than if we change that to 0.25. That seems to be my favorite. Now, the best way to do this is to set it up. You can set it up the way that I have make your own choices, take the drone out, fly it, then feel how the sticks feel. And if they're too reactive, if they're responding too quickly, you can hover your drone, come back in here, and fine tune these settings until you get the control that you want. Now the rudder control, right and left, if your drone doesn't have the ability to pan the camera gimbal left and right, you have to do that with the drone, the nose of the drone. So softening that can give you a much more cinematic look in your videos as you're moving the drone left or right. Okay, we're gonna come back. We're gonna leave the descent speed while diving to 8.9 miles per hour. If you set that too high and you come down too quickly, you can get into trouble. I'm not gonna go into the details of that, but if you're just starting out, leave it where it is. Now sensors. This is telling us what our accelerometer and our gyroscope are doing. This is also where we would calibrate our IMU. If everything is in the green, then we're good to go. Let's take a look at the compass and we're going to leave that all alone. Coming down the screen, we're going to take a look at stop motor method. There's two options. CSC is where you Move the sticks in a specific way to cause the motors to stop, and you can do that in the air. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. I leave it set to do not stop in the air, but that's my personal preference. Coming down to the sensor settings, 
we can see that we have a lot of them on the Inspire 2. You may have more or less depending on the drone you have. Starting out, just turn them all on. Leave them on until you feel confident enough and you've learned more about what each of them do to start turning them off. In advanced settings, same thing. I've got a couple options here that have really been helpful. I've had a disconnect when the drone was quite a long ways away from me and the obstacle check on return to home here kept it from running into a tall building, which was very helpful, and return to home remote obstacle avoidance. Both of those helped in getting the drone back safely. Now let's take a look at the remote controller settings. The two areas I'm gonna show you are charging your mobile phone. I have mine set to never, but you could set it to continuous where it's always charging it, or smart where it'll only start charging it if it starts to get low. And now you've got either two buttons. If you've got Inspires, you've got two buttons. If you've got Phantom, a Phantom, you've got two buttons. If you've got a Mavic, you've got more options to set here. But to set them, you just tap on them, choose what you want that button to do. And now that button will perform that function. The buttons are the ones that are on the back of the remote. Let's take a look at HD. This has to do with the image transmission and I let this take care of itself. There have been times where I've had to switch it between 2.4 and 5.8 because I was in a vicinity where 2.4 had a lot of interference going on and I leave my image transmission set it to 1080p and that's all we want to do in here. Next is batteries. You can see that I have two of them. You will, unless you have an Inspire 2, you will have one. I set my critical low battery warning to 20% and I set the low battery warning to 30. You typically don't want to fly your batteries below 25% on a regular basis. It'll make them last longer if you don't do that. The other thing is battery self-discharge time. You can set it up to 20 days. I set mine at seven. Okay. Details will tell you information about the battery or batteries and the number of times they've been charged. Lastly, we're going to take a look at gimbal settings. Now on mine, I have a pretty sophisticated gimbal. I can control a lot on this. This is a place where start with the default settings and then start changing them with the, the drone without propellers sitting on your kitchen table or on a desk and see what happens when you move the gimbal. And set this so that you get a nice smooth transition. If you have the ability to set up two different ones, set up smooth for video and set up faster for photography so you can frame your picture more quickly. The last thing I want to mention is the gimbal auto calibration. I do this each time before I go out on a shoot and you need to put your drone on a level table. You need to get a level and make sure that it is level and then you press that and let it go through the process of calibrating it. There you go. That'll get you started and I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and fly safe and have fun.